Yeah. But it's Twitch. There's no need for an open. You just wait for people to join. Cool. Uh, let me just... Uh... Do uh oh fuck off. Yeah, no, I gotta update my stuff. Yeah, I think the next the next the next big purchase is probably gonna be a new laptop anyway. Like, that was in my head. Like, I just wanted to get golf clubs. So, like. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. I want to do more stuff with videos, but uh, let me just buy nine iron first. Yes. I just bought another four iron. So, now I'm officially set with clubs. There's nothing. I'm done. The next purchase is a laptop. You just got to give me the actual stuff. I, I need. got. Oh, I got to give it to you. I got to give you the information on, on the laptop. Yeah, you're the. the... I gave you information on what, on what technology to get. And you're like, I don't want to spend money on this. I'm like, yeah, but you can combine your video games and all your work on the side in one thing. And that's a computer. A PC so is by far the best thing that I've ever invested in. Listen. I've had it for nearly two years. And it's the greatest yeah. thing. It's the greatest thing. Video games are 10 times better, by the way. Um and you can play cross-platform now, so it doesn't even matter that you need to worry about playing with people on other consoles. You could watch anything you're using it as a computer, and then you could edit on programs you'll have way faster. But I can't take it with me. Yeah, but so what? That's kind of the whole point. Yeah, but what if I want to like take my laptop with me on vacation to the thr- record something or say it. well then you and i have two different definitions of vacation vacation is fuck off and leave me alone <laughs> and yours no, is like let me write i can't do that no it's, I, I don't know I, i'll have to see i mean i need to invest in something because this is super slow maybe it's just because i have a, you know it's funny i have um this was like i think five years ago maybe six years ago when twitter was less gatekeepy that's not even keepy of like player comps and like, restrictions there. So I would do, I would actually do like player comps videos. I did like Frank Kessie before he joined Milan, yeah, I, did no. Jorginho. Yeah, yeah. I did all these players. And now it's like, if you post something, I'm not going through the hassle of creating a video and to get a copyright. So, yeah. Well, anyways, we're live. I don't know how yeah. many people have joined us. It's just as one person. If you want to just go retweet my tweet, I tagged you again. Yeah. Let me, um, I'll just pull it up on. Yeah, this is gonna take a few minutes. I just. (laughs) Yeah, all the people that hopped in the comments on your thing, but didn't join the stream. I get it. Uh, well, still is a work week. Um, and I'll have those up. Oh, John's in here. Hey, John, how are you, man? What's going on, John? I remember the OG heads of like when we did Milan when we yeah when we did Milan reports and it was um they tune in here from time to time when I've done stuff they they hop in actually what's Texas Groove (laughs) Texas Groove um we could start off with yeah something is this I think I think this one is probably the best question of all um. Is this squad able to mount a Serie A charge or title push without Mike Magnan? Um, so just the background on Magnan's situation now is that he's definitely not going to start this match coming up um, out of the break. And the injury is just lingering, man. There's always something with him now because we were sitting there thinking he might have a chance of making it to the world cup. And then he doesn't end up making the world cup, doesn't end up joining whatsoever. So you're like, okay, whatever. He'll just rehab and he'll be back soon. Not the case. Manyan is in danger of missing all of January at this point, according to some rumors. So it's not even just specific to that. Milan can't do this without him. They have no chance. Um, you can't, you can't play Tatarasanu. In these matches that matter, even Sportiello, so if they get him 
earlier. Well, yeah, well, that, that was, I was going to bring that up after because that's still kind of mm-hmm. like up in the air. That He's almost a guarantee as the backup to Manyan for next season. Fine, that's great. I care about now. Um, yeah. You know, like, because there is some risk of top four. There is. Um, yeah. to just To just simply, like, think we're good. Listen, we'll get players back and all that stuff, but we're already seeing more knocks. Origi has an ha- has a hamstring issue. Um, the striker situation is very puzzling. Zlatan is supposed to be back end of January, early uh, February. Obviously, it's multiple things in regards to a title push. We do have our right wingers back. Salamakers is back. He scored again. Um, so bizarre. He looks a lot more calm and actually improved in that area of his game. But I'm not holding my breath. He's not the answer long term. Is that what I'm saying? Uh, if Milan don't reinvest, Matt, and I've said this, they're not going anywhere. Forget about the Magnan injury. The Magnan injury is just a one of one thing that's going to hurt them. And I think they drop points because of it. And obviously those all add up. But mm-hmm. the reality is this. You don't invest in January. Napoli's winning their third title and their first in like 30 something years. And I'm dead serious about that. I don't think you catch Napoli. Yeah, no, that this obviously this it's weird because like this so in different scales, right? Like we've been talking about like raising the level of the team, like the overall team, right? And I know this is something that you and I have talked about, you know, in various WhatsApp chats, text conversations back and forth as the games were happening. Mm-hmm. And right, like, okay, so you win the title against yeah. conventional odds, right? Books didn't really have Milan in that conversation, maybe as like a fourth team third team right yeah and you win the title and it's great but you're Milan so the natural reaction it's not like a Leicester right I know people are going to say it's a different animal it's a different league they have more money I'm talking strictly about the brand itself right like Leicester won that title I think if you ask most fans of Leicester City they would be like hey we didn't expect to win a title we got to see our team win a Premier League title that's something I'll hold with me for years so, yeah, like, they want to compete, lesser, but they're not yeah. sitting here trying to be like, oh, we need to win titles every year, right? It's a different animal. It's a different conversation when you're talking about Milan. Right? You got this entire era of, of grim, dark right. football and, and uncertainty to get to a title, get to yeah. the Champions League. Now, well, what's next? New ownership, new stadium. So, to see this still yeah. be a team that's kind of operating and running like a – we're just trying to get top four. Yeah. It seems – it's it's – and I know, you know, we've talked about this too, right? Yeah. As things have kind of moved forward with like the right. Leal saga and oh, Benacer yeah. saga and all these things. I don't know Twitter's taking forever to load, of course, because my laptop's ancient. Um, sure. You know, it's, it's w- because Milan won a title, you can almost stomach losing Donnarumma for free because you got Manuel and you can almost stomach Hakan, right? Because he's, uh, he's had some good moments for Inter, but based on what he's getting paid, I think most fans could agree that, okay, we didn't really need to spend that money on him, right? Romagnoli, he's looked okay for Lazio. But now it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so you spent wisely on Benacer Leao. They yeah. became the players that you thought they were. And now you can't keep them. Isn't the model to keep these players, buy them low, develop them, and keep them as part of the project? Or and just grow. Or even sell for a profit, uh, worst case. Well, but, but, but I think if you're – look, that's if, that's if it was old ownership. If you have new ownership and ambitions to get a new stadium, all these sorts of yeah, things, yeah, yeah, and those are players you got to keep now. Like, say with yeah, yeah, of course, Juventus were winning; they weren't losing their top players. Keely, which wasn't I always, walking. I always, I always gave him credit for that because it right. was vital. You know, it was very difficult for Napoli, but continue. Right, right. So that's where the, I think the frustration comes. I mean, I'll wrap it up here on this specific topic. I'm sure we're gonna maybe cross into this at certain points during the stream, but. You can't lose Leao and Benacer. I don't. I don't even care necessarily if the conversation is, "Hey, we can't come to an agreement on the fees or the wages. We're gonna sell them." I still have a way about that. I really would because the numbers that we're hearing, Benacer, four million. Rabio is getting paid what seven, eight. Like you're telling double. me that Rabio and Pay is is double the money that Benacer should be getting. He's not. He's not even, he's not even players, better hit than him objectively. It's, yeah. Exactly. In this climate, in this landscape of football, 
for a 24-year-old midfielder Benacer, who has Champions League experience now, is a difference maker. You heard what Tonali said about him as being like, Benacer is very important to what we do. Like he's, yes, Leal is important, but it doesn't mean Benacer isn't on that same level. Of course, four million. Like that, if you ways. can't if, if you can't extend players for for four million, that's a problem. We're lucky that Teo Hernandez said four million. I'll agree to that because he obviously loves Milan. He loves the fact that Paolo Maldini brought him to the club and he's had good success here. And he's been able to, of course, bring that to the I French think national because he, he know he knows what it's like at other massive clubs and right. what the reality of the situation is. Are there that many places better than Milan getting paid the amount of money that I'm getting paid relative to my peers at that position? Like four million for a left back these days is a lot. And he gets he's worth it. He gets yeah. what he deserves. I will say there was positive news if we want to just transition to the Benesser and the extension mm. talk. There was more positive news about Benesser, and almost every single reliable reporter is saying there's a lot of progress being made with this. I'm actually optimistic about this. I think it makes too much sense for all parties that Benacer stays. I also think that mm. the the money that he is requesting is fair. I also think that Rafael Liao, and I said this, I don't know if you remember this a while back, but I did say I could see this potential of a short-term contract extension of Rafa. Like a two-year whereas, deal, something like that. Whereas Milan still keep him on. He's still on there, but he holds that value. I also do think you can get an incredible sum for a player like him, despite one year left on his contract, because you're still vying for one of the best young wingers in the world that can change the outlook and trajectory of your club. And I think that's important. Um, that being said, I don't necessarily believe that because I think if, I think Liao's already extended if he does not have that sporting issue. Um, obviously, that yeah. is an issue. Yeah. That's realistic. Of course, Milan has that. Uh, but but well, but but let me to be fair about this. Can I be fair about this, right? So sure. this isn't something that has just all of a sudden. Whoa, we didn't know this yeah. existed. So you yeah. acquire him with the idea that hey, he turns out because right because they spent a significant sum on him. I think people at the time when they made that deal, people were like, I've heard of him as a prospect, but is he like? 30 million worth because that's that's somewhere the sum they paid yeah, for him right yeah. from Lille is he uh, worth yeah, that like, like, do, yeah. do Milan have that money to spend 30 million on like a risk player that might be good right it's not like a Pe Jens Petter Hauger 5 million yeah. hey we sell him for profit away we go like they were spending 30 million on this guy in 2019 Correct. and they were still not a Champions League team they were still a team that was kind of going coach to coach right Giampaolo was the coach at the time so when you bring him in and you see that the 19 million or 18 million in, in compensation that boarding for is there. This isn't something that just up on them. I just think yeah. got, went, went through and they were like, oh, he's a great player now. Now that's it's one of those things where it becomes a massive. It's not something I've seen from other transfers. I know this is probably something that has existed in some capacity where they, the previous teams own compensation. And you can make a case, look. You know, it's almost basically like if they did renew him or sell him, it's like a sell-on clause, right? How you got to pay, we get this much money back or the club gets this mm -hmm. much money back, right? But more or less, that this kind of was hashed, very frustrating. Now, I think that what it boils down to is the player's great quality. Ibrahimovic has said it. Every player said it. We've all seen him play well. Mm -hmm. He's the Serie A MVP. At some point with Milan, Martino... Yeah. you got to make an exception. The exception was before, years ago, was Donnarumma is the only exception we're going to make. They offered me 10 million, whatever it was, and he left for PSG for uh, like 12. Yeah, they, uh, it wasn't even 10. They didn't even go to 10. They offered it. They went like to like eight or something. Eight. They went like that eight was, and change. He was the only exception they were going to make, him and Ibra, right? He also, and Ibra, short term I, deal. Wasn't he also like just to, to to just back up your point here? That was yeah. also like the second highest paid goalkeeper in the world. It's not even like Milan were sitting there saying we're not even going to pay you for what you're supposed to be. Like Milan yeah. did that was the most fair fair offers. But that's where I get confused in this is I well not confused. The hesitancy is not about the wages. I actually yeah. don't believe in that. It's all about sporting. It has yeah. to be. 
they you're asking them to fork up 19 million euro that's that's that. a that's a that's a new attacker like that's really if you put it 20 million dollar player imagine getting a 20 imagine milan getting a i don't know um I'm trying to think Bro, every every like every player that Milan currently has an attack that is currently a forward, the only player that costs more than yeah. that 19 million that isn't Rafael Leal is Charlie de Catalade. And that's yeah. it. Every single player was under like 10 million. Giroud was low fee, uh, almost a free. Zlatan, same thing. Lazatic went up to almost like what? Like it was like five million and change, or almost up to ten. Salamakers three and a half. Macias, like three and a half. They don't spend the money like that. But if that's the case, Matt, and you know that, and that's okay that Milan don't have the money or finances to pay that, then you sell him. Yeah. And when yeah, is the I quickest mean... that you sell, R- R- Rafa? You have to keep him on for th- for 2023 into June. Um, and then you sell. But would you sell in January? No. No. Because right? I think at the end of the day, like, if you're selling him, now – so it, 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 here's here's the thing, right? Because it mm-hmm. it's always it's always an interesting case when you I'm trying to like navigate my like that's why I move my phone back and forth. Um, okay, Moose is just in re- here, by the way, just to let oh, everybody know. There he is. He He's a man of his word. About Milan, and Maldini's incompetence, um, whatever that means. Um, so here's 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 what I'm thinking here, right? You can't sell a player in January of his caliber because let's say for the sake of the conversation, right? No team is saying, well, we're not going to pay his release clause. We're not paying 150 million for a player mm. that is, has one year left on his deal. Say you get a team like Chelsea, who uh, may be a little bit desperate. They need some life into the attack or another team, name another team. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're saying, Hey, we'll give you 60, we'll give you 60 million for him, 70 million for him right now. Even if they did go with that, I think it's still a risk for Milan because now you're the guy that you're going to get in has to adapt. It could be a flop, and you're really, I mean, you're to your your MVP, you're selling the league's best player mm-hmm. in January, and now you're expected to still maintain your objective for the for the year. That's that's one that's one end of it. The second end of it is say Milan got sixty to seventy million for it. Well, now if you're going to other teams and you're trying to sort of essentially place that output that he brings goals assists it's impossible and everything. in january you can't it's replace impossible. him directly right now at least number two is selling teams know that yeah we, got money. we know yeah. you got 60 to 70 million for this guy and we right now so you're going to squeeze milan that's almost what newcastle started not newcastle um club rouge kind of started to do with the Kittelar because they were saying this is the price tag meet it and they kept going up and offer till eventually they did it. So Milan aren't in a position where they can just, as we all know, Roman Favre, some of the other targets they went over the years, they're not in a position to get into negotiation battle. They're going to go and go for players that are someone that could get in quick, that's going to maybe help them in the short term, and then maybe well, they grow into a better player. Well, so that, you can't sell Leal this. You can't sell Leal in January. Yeah. If you're going to do it, it's got it. You have to know by now, because it's been months, that you're not going to get a deal done for layout, you have to sell him in the summer for whatever well, you can get. Well, they're still well, they're still trying to get this uh, agreement done. Um, whether or not I think that gets done is like two different things. So to move on to what Muja is saying, so here's yeah. Muja's explanation as to why Maldini yeah. is incompetent. I think incompetent is too far. Has he fucked up in certain situations? I understand it. I, you're not wrong. Um, I do think there were certain angles to the Donnarumma and Hakan and Kessie renewals that they all wanted way more money than they deserved. And secondly, keeping them and letting them leave was integral into getting back into the Champions League. Not only that, winning the title. Um, yeah. Milan don't win the title if they sell Kessie. Uh, so I'll say this. Maldini's contract mm-hmm. extensions, and this is and this is where I would get very upset, is that we do this whole thing and Leal runs out and he leaves on a free. That right there is a fireable offense. Straight up. I'll be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. I, I understand who Paolo is. It's a fireable yeah. offense. You can't allow this guy to leave on a free. It would like given the you, history of the other players that have left. You can get so much money. Yeah. You can get so much money for this kid, even just with one year left. And I know, and I know it's going to bother a lot of fans. But you do have great scouting. 
you will now have funds. You will now have, in theory, you would think making the Champions League for a third straight year. And on top of it, that includes more money. I think the biggest caveat in all of this is what is Redbird going to give in terms of a budget? What is what what are they playing with here? We've heard nothing about January. We've heard little about that. Well, we've um, heard rumors that they're not going to really do much, right? Paolo Maldini, like that's that's what we've been reading. That, the and, sources are yeah, and yeah, the and the but, sources it's it's murky. It's all murky. Yeah. But there was a World Cup going on, and I do believe that the priorities are these extensions right now. I do think mm-hmm. Benacer actually gets done. I think we keep Benacer. I as far as Leao, I would be very pleasantly surprised if that happens. My gut tells me no. Um, I don't see how we finance. Okay, how about this? So this is a question. This will go on TikTok and social media. Matt Santangelo. Milan extend Rafael Leao, and they keep him for the foreseeable future, and he stays here for years to come. But you pay off the fee that is supposed to go to Sporting for 19 million euro, mm-hmm. and with that, it prevents you from having more in your budget come summer 2023. Are you okay with Milan losing out on potentially 20 million euro for the summer market to keep on Rafael Leao for the future? Man, I mean, look, you have to, it, it's all fun and well to sell a player and think, oh, well, we have 70 million to work with. But look what happened with Shishov Piontek and Paketa, two players mm-hmm. that were brought in in January. 70 million. 70 combined. million. None of them are here anymore. They're lucky that they sold to, I think it was Earth of Berlin for a pretty sizable amount, like 24, uh, 23 million. Nearly, the, nearly like 30. They almost reallocated everything. Right, yeah. right. So they almost essentially almost broke, broke even, even, right? How yeah. the numbers worked out. Paketa bounced around. They got a cut from his deal to West, right? So just because you have 70 million, and we saw this with Mirabelli, Fasone, yeah. right? It's it's not how much how much money you have and who's handling that money. I do I will say I do trust this group this group like Monka yeah. and you know the, the other people around him giving him insight on what players to go to right because I know behind the scenes they have a lot of people that are analytically driven looking at the market and trying to see who which player. But I I here's my my concern. Or here's, sure. I rather, here's my way of framing this, right? Now, you can get, like, if you pay the $19 million for a player, right? Like, let's say you, you extend layout and you pay that, you, you yeah. sort out the $19 million with, with sporting. Yeah. Would you rather do that than try and get a 40 to $50 million player in the market and that you're going to have to probably pay based on that quality for the $5 million anyway? Like, when you look at the entire thing, I think people just look at fees. People just look at the transfer. Yeah, sure. But if you're looking at a player like, hey, seven million or eight million a year for four years or three years yeah. for Rafael Leao plus the nineteen million in comp, I don't have the numbers. I'm not great at math. But when you kind of put the whole package together of what you would have to bring and keep ultimately Leao versus trying to get a replacement, call it a Okafor, call it someone like that caliber, mm-hmm. it kind of almost almost shakes out. MVP. I've seen a player that's grown with this team. I've seen a player that can carry a team. Mm-hmm. That's my concern. I'd rather say, you know what, Leo, we're going to make the financial sacrifice. We're going to pay off sporting for you because you've been a great t- player for this team. Yeah. Pioli loves you. The team loves you. And who's you. to Everyone say you can resell him again in the future, even if he is extended? You're going to be able to. He's not a player that has extensive injury history. He's got Champions League Almost experience yeah. now. He's played. He's played for Portugal a little bit at the World Cup. He showed you what he can do in small spurts. I think it's kind of a no-brainer if Redbird are serious, provided they are serious about building a project well, on, the, that, on well, the field that can yeah. aim for more. Yeah. Well, so it's, it's a good answer. Not short enough for social media, as San Tangelo's go. Of course, uh, but... <laughs> but it's but it's good for YouTube. But it's, it's, it's not one of those answers that you could uh, do it concisely. Yeah. Uh, so... I, again, I think a lot of these questions are being raised around the seriousness of Redbird and, yeah. and how legitimate this is. Part of me says you don't spend 1.2 billion euro for a team just to not reinvest. But also, I think there are timelines within this project that Milan has that you're saying to yourself, 
Will they eventually get there? Because Maldini has made these comments in the past. We've seen other people within the project say, yeah. hey, we cannot do this until we are sustainably making the Champions League multiple years in a row. And the difference in which everyone likes to make comparisons when Juve were starting their title reign 10 years ago is that the league wasn't even close to being as competitive as it is now. And the gap between larger and bigger European clubs at the highest mm. level is not... There has never been a wider gap between the Premier League and Serie A as there is right now. Okay? Um, maybe a couple years ago, maybe maybe Serie A has closed gonna, the gap a little bit. Figures. But they're by, yes, by, for, by, like financial, financially speaking, yeah. financially speaking, Mo, uh, Moises Caicedo, just, just a player to think of, right, that we're seeing go to other... Right, uh, West Ham going all in for Lucas Paqueta, playing that Wolves are beating our world record transfers. These are loser, no name clubs that win win nothing, that they amount to nothing. Look at Manchester United. Players. Just look at United getting with, that guy Triore from Atalanta. Did uh, even bat an eye, yeah. paid a million, millions, millions, 50, 50 that's million. A, that's it, a would move. Have, it would have been Milan's record. That's a move that if a Serie A club made, let's say Milan went after that player, right? And they paid that yeah. much money for a player. Opt, that's like a, a move that can, you back cripple for years. Your, that, that can cripple your finances, yeah. right? But it Manchester United, back. we talked about this with Pet, right? Like in our chats, some of the moves they've made, like it, it's astonishing that these teams, and this just goes, shows you the, the, the balance of power and the strength behind the Premier League teams and the, the, the powers that be there versus what's going on in Serie A. And this is a conversation that goes above Milan. It's, it's, a, it's a league thing. It's a governing body type issue, right? Yeah. TV rights, all that stuff. But we're just yeah. talking strictly on the basis of Milan's situation here. Yeah. That, that, here's the thing that kind of gets me a little bit frustrated. And I know I'm gonna we're going on tangents here, but we haven't had one of these in a while. So I think we're uh, making up for lost time. It's fine, they can watch as, on YouTube. Subscribe. As I see on my trending, Maldini's trending. That's weird. Um, yeah, because it's probably just fucking. So we've gorgeous. heard for a couple. We've heard for a couple years, right? It's probably. Uh, Omar and, and, and his course, question probably, was why is Pioli so bold? We'll get into that later. Let's <laughs> <Here we> go. <laughs> that's a good question. I think my I would I would follow up a crack question with another question. Is he the best bald manager in Serie A or is it Spalletti? Or Italiano, I don't know. Um but oh, here's geez. here's what I so 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 we've been saying for a couple years, right? A couple years ago the conversation that Maldini said or had we need a couple years of sustainable. We need to correct the books. We correct, need to be uh, seasons right so now yeah. the books the balance sheets are among the best in Serie A relative to some like Inter and Juve and right Champions League back-to-back years you want a title you got out of the group right this by year. the way they could so win a now, trophy in a couple of weeks now so now what's the conversation because you said it's two years of sustainable growth in the Champions League and competing yeah. we did that we've done that right we've done that made the, made the knockout as right. well very big Right. So now with the con- – there's the pressure there. You can't fall back and lean on that excuse now. Yeah. It's not no, necessarily – it's more of a project thing. Because if True. that's what Maldini was feeding the fan base and his conversations, his interviews, yeah. as, well, we need two years, three years of, of at this level before we – Paolo, we're here. Now what? So that's where I think it comes into the court of Redbird to say, if not now, when? Group of players that you may, being honest, may never really get to in the it, it, that quickly. Benacer worth quite a bit. Sandro Tonali worth quite a bit. Teo Hernandez, Tamori, Rafael. I mean, you have Manon. You have five to six players who are assets, yeah. In their prime, before not even in their prime, that are top players. Yeah. In the world of European football. Yep. If you can't maximize that now and start to take next leaps, yeah. then when? Then when? That's my that's my where I'm coming. I don't from I don't I don't think so that two it was the quote was four to five years of sustainable good play. Well, it's the reality of it. They and this was prior to the Redbird sale. But it but it's but it was prior to the Redbird sale. Okay. With Elliot, totally would have understood. I totally get it. Redbird, yeah. it's like they were not. What is? They were there to balance the books. 
That's what Ellie's for. It's and exactly and sell for yeah. the best price yeah. that they could, and they got them at a incredible price. One point two billion. They more than doubled what they paid for. What the real issue is here is that okay, how serious is this project, and what's this betting? I if if you tell me Milan are increasing everything wage wise, and they'll take a little bit of a hit in terms of fees for players to sign, and you can only do like. Say, say like next summer in like theory, this is just like me putting stuff out there. It's like a 35 yeah. million euro player like the Catalare. You confirm Astor Franks. Um, and then your budget is near nearly almost 100 million. You could get like a couple other players, right? Say, I don't think you're going to do Des for 20 million. I think that's not going to happen. I also don't think Brahim Diaz is going to happen for that price as well. But I'm yeah. saying like, can you get 30 million for a right winger? Is there somebody out there that you could say like, hey, we love this guy. We love this profile. We want to bring him in and we get him with another. Like, I just think I don't I don't think there's a player right now that they have money to spend and go all in on. I think Charlotte for a transfer of ownership, just making the Champions League for a second straight time in the middle of a recession after a pandemic is a pretty sizable investment. But. This the, like I can't be sitting here and saying I can't extend guys, and then also we're like we're half-assing investments come summertime. There needs to be that leap when Juve when Juve were making Champions League finals and losing in Champions League finals and and investing and in bringing in better players. They were saying, "Hey, it's not good enough." Gonzalo Higuain, ninety million. That's when that's when they were pushing the envelope when they were extending players where they had more depth than anyone was. Milan but, and the difference is they were adding players to their core. They had a core, and versus yeah, have they did. and, yes, and, and well. resting on their laurels of saying, "Well, we have this core. We're going to try to ride this ship," right? Yeah, they built around that core of of, of top players. They have Chiellini, Bardai, yeah. Bonucci, Buffon. They had a couple years of Tevez. They had Pirlo, Marquisio. Mm. They had a core play, and then they went out there and maybe they didn't hit on every guy in the market, but they did drop in that. To your point, that like, okay. What's the next piece to get us over the edge? Drop an Iguain. What's the next piece to see? Maybe, hey, maybe we can get one last push with the guys we have. They took a major splash with Ronaldo. I'm not saying that Milan need to go those lengths because 90 million and 100 million, respectively, for players like that, is I not want necessarily what, what I was think. doing. I think that personally speaking, if you listen, if you sold on fans, right? Because last year the budget was. It was, it, it was. It was like. Around like there. almost between, like fifty, between yeah. op between getting the options on Macias and Florenzi and whatever, right? Well, Call it well yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, right. You sold this to Milan fans, and you said, "Hey, you know what? Last year we spent in the vicinity of fifty million, right? We believe the big prize of that market was the Kikilare. He hasn't panned out yet, but we're gonna let him grow just like we did with the other guys, like Leal, Teo, so on and so forth." If you sold this to Milan fans and said, "Hey, yo, we're gonna get three to four players in a market." I mean, relatively yeah. speaking, it might differ if there's an injury, sure. right? They quickly I pivoted know. and got deaths. If you told this to Milan fans, and if I'm and I'm asking you, if they said, "Hey, our budget's going to be seventy million this year," I think you would be able to convince a lot it's of Milan fans budget. to say, "Hey, you know what? Seventy million's fine because the guys handling the money can go out there and get us three to four players that are going to yeah. help us right now, including that difference maker in the attack." Well, that's well, but, that's also in how they approach it. Yeah. Like what's what's the approach? Like I I'll ask you this, and I'm not even to cut you off, but it's like it, they're a good question because you're like, yeah, seventy million for three to four players, but those profiles of those players are more more so projects, more or less projects. I want a guy that's worth forty million that I could say put on the right wing, just like again in theory. If I could have a guy for forty million, okay, and then you're saying, okay, well you only have thirty million left, it might just only be two players. I'll be like, yeah. for example, like a Skamaka. Okay. Hey, forty million. Here's your striker. Yes, yes. Just, just go, just go, go for that. To, yeah. Like I'm not saying specifically him. If Jonathan yeah, no, no, David no, is there, happening, but... like Jonathan David, forty million. Marcus Teram. No. I think he's a free. I think he's a free. I think he's free. But... Yeah, yeah, he's free though. But like, yeah. no, you're saying like forty million. No, no, know, no, no, no. That's no, no, a, no. that's the funny thing. Like, it's because three twenty four. Oh, yeah. Like that fits the project, like the, the ethos of what this team is. But you can get in there and he'll 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 gel with the guys, right? Like, and I, I don't think MS has got to be soon. Yeah, well, of course it's got to be soon because you're starting to see 
these guys drop off, right? Because the money eventually is going to pass Milan by to the point where Leao is like, look, I appreciate – I can get 15 to 16 million somewhere else. Like, like look at the money. Like the, sure, no – we're lucky, like we're like. Listen, I and I talk to my brother all the time about this. We're lucky that Teo Hernandez didn't say Pep Guardiola wants me at City. I'm going. No disrespect to Milan, I'm I'm leaving for City for. Like, I think I think, I think that's yeah, what I Milan has to. They, that's what I that's fear nice. with them. That's what I fear with a lot of these guys. Because money I think talks. if people want to, of course, money talks. But I was really talking about you need a guy now because your strikers are combined age of eighty. But I don't. <laughs> I, that's a, that's a, yeah. That's what and, I was and, and, and and this is money. The strikers, money is the striker money. situation is the most frustrating thing because, like, you and I have talked. So we always say that. When are they going to get a striker? When are they going to get a striker? When are they getting a striker? Mm-hmm. To which I always pose the question back to them. Give me a name that's realistic. Yeah. 30 to 40 million, because that's the market, right? Like the, 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 Even more. The, I, the think, selling I think 30, team, 30 might be cheap. The selling team is go, like the team that knows they have a striker who's of good quality, right? They like look at Sassuolo. They were like, someone's going to pay 40 plus million for Skamaka. It'll probably be a Premier League team, but someone's going to pay 40 million for him. They did, sure. right? Because a young striker, those positions are tough to come by. Fiorentina, they're like, no, 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 no. We're not selling Vlahovic to Milan for 50 million. 70 million. That's the number. Mm-hmm. Teams are paying that because they know that Milan doesn't have the financial capacity, at least from what I can tell and what I've been told by the club themselves, right? Because we know all the information here about where their budget is, how much they're going to spend, yada, yada, yada. They're not going to spend 40 to 50 million on a singular player. Like, we're not there yet, in my opinion. Not I yet. Wish not we yet. Were. I think they will one day soon. I think if... they will one day, but we're not there yet. And if you're <laughs> no, going to get know. the difference maker, if you're going to get the difference maker, that's what that they number is going to be. Mm-hmm. But I think that's why they took he's the. He's a good guy. I don't know. I think that's I why they took, they took the Lasatich types as like lottery tickets in a way, like high value yeah. lottery tickets. And Lasatich is talented, man. But again, yeah. the difference is expectation to your club. If Lasatich, you know why Dusan Vlahovic was cool and worked out of Fiorentina? Because it's Fiorentina. Yeah. Okay. If Dusan was in a situation where he's like Lasatich right now, yeah, they're expecting more of him. And I think it's important to move on to what um, your guy Ricardo and our guy uh, Cominelli. Is asking us. He had a couple of questions. Do we scrap Origi and go get someone else in January? We, re- we already touched on January. I think Origi is just still going to be the depth. I think, unfortunately, they took a hit with the wages that he's at. I think he's better than yeah. what he's shown, but he's not staying on the pitch, and it's irrelevant otherwise. It doesn't matter, um, yeah. Exactly. Um, how likely are the re-signings of Leo and Benacer? I think Benacer is an 8.5 at this rate from everything I'm hearing and reading. Leo is like a four and a half. Um, that's more than a five. I'll be generous and give you a five yeah. and say it's yeah. that's, but that's me saying it's 50 50, and I don't think it's 50 50 at this point. Yeah. Is Milan going for a mic backup until his return? I would assume Sportiello is that. They're going to um, try and get him in earlier. And then the all important question who's a better baller, you or me? Um, it's you. I never really played like that. I growing up, listen, I had so an by, de- game, by, so. de- <laughs> by default, by default, it's not even, it's not even close. I, I promise. I had a. Uh, I had it. No, I listen. I didn't play in high school. I played on like indoor teams. Um, I had my first game like back in two years. In two years, mm-hmm. and it's like, it's just a different animal, man. Like you might think well, yeah, I'm better. You, you try. You try bulking up. Well, you are Not better. Well. Okay, so what? From ages six to <laughs> senior year of high school, six to eighteen. How many years did you play football? From mm-hmm. that, from six to eighteen. How many years? None. None. None? And so, you, so you're just out. so you're just like so you're just like me. That's so Dude, funny. yeah. You're, so yeah, many yeah, people yeah. are gonna hate us for that, but funny how that works. <laughs> but you don't have to like Arrigo Saki said. You don't have to be a horse to train one. <clears throat> so that'll answer Joe Cappuccino's question. Who could take better free kicks, me or you? I, I don't know. Probably me. I mean, yeah. I, I have no. That I would no be fun. That would be fun to one day like put to the test. Like, 
We could. Like, no wall. No wall, obviously. Like, we need to fucking Ronaldo here uh, hitting the wall the whole time. Uh, so, <laughs> Alexa. Yeah. So, so Alexa is asking. Dive Alexa. A very nice Juve fan. A friend. Why do you? Why do Milan fans <clears throat> like Juve so much? Do Don't they? ever ask me a question like that again. I don't know if they do. Are we going to ever be great again? <laughs> this is by Naftali. Are we ever going to be great again like Madrid? Be? <clears throat> Define great. Uh, like, what's well, great. He like, said Madrid, great Madrid, 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 great. Um, are we winning three Champions Leagues? Okay, so this is the loaded question. question and this has yeah. everything to do. The only answer, okay, is this. Well, there's two, there's two questions. And the, and the answer <clears> is pretty simple. Um. Well, one, forever is a very long time. So it's yeah. impossible to say. Um, so like you go back in the 90s, you say Serie A will be fucking pathetic in 20 years. Everyone's just like, they yeah, call okay. you crazy because it was the summit. Um, mm-hmm. Is Italy going mm-hmm. to change as a country and their stubbornness anytime soon and, mm-hmm. and their you know municipalities and these mayors, these politicians making things ever so difficult? I think if Italy can guarantee a major international tournament, then you'll see Italian football change, but they need that. Um, Secondly, how serious is Redbird and their attempts to get the stadium in here? If Redbird, if they can get this stadium, it is changing. They can get back. They can win a champions league by like 2032. I believe in that. Um, But (laughs) I don't, no, there's always a thought with this team. I don't, I don't like it's, it's, it's not about Milan, it's about it's about Italy, the it's league, about the yeah. country allowing them to do this. How much more progress do they make? Again, is it great to see Milan make strides? Is it good for Napoli to make these strides? Is it great to see better ownership in Roma? Yes, I think all those things are integral and important. But if Inter's screwing around, if Juve's screwing around, they're not making that progress. The league isn't going to take that step. The league needs everybody. Everybody could sit around, poke fun, make fun of the other club and say, well, you need us to be great. You need us to be great. Oh, you like everyone is saying that about their club. Hey, guys, everybody needs everybody to be great in order to do this. It's not one singular team. It's not Juve. It's not just Milan. It's not just Inter. It's not. It's the collective. Everybody needs to do great. We need Milan, Inter, and Juve making deep runs into the competition. We need Napoli uprooting teams like they've been doing this year on a consistent basis. They need that. Is that going to happen? The likelihood is no, based off of everything that has gone on in this country and league. Um, I, I love Ahmed's question. I'll say it. Um, and ask, who's going to be the breakout player for the second half of this season? My answer is Aster Reins. I think this player is going to... I think Matt's frozen, guys. Um, so, Matt, if you could unfreeze, you guys tell me. Um, hey, Sensei Coco and everybody else in here, by the way. John, uh, Jay Sim, I've been seeing your stuff. Uh, you'd like to sell Rigi in the summer. I don't know if anybody would be willing to pay for Rigi. Uh, Santangelo is probably going to leave and come back. Yeah, he said his phone overheated. <laughs> so, whenever he can come back... Um, we'll get Santangelo back in here. So it'll just be me for now. Um, we're about 45 minutes in. Um, so for me, I think um, that we're just going to see Astor Franks uh, step up and play fantastic for the entire second half of the season. I think his versatility and his progressiveness as a ball carrier is going to be huge for Milan. I think that having that versatility – mixing with Tonali and Benacer and the way he's had these weeks to develop during the break of the World Cup, um, already building off of that confidence and good performances that he had when he saw the pitch um, is definitely something important to him. I think he's going to be that breakout player. I would hope and I think the most important player that needs to break out is Charlotte de Catalane. I don't think Milan can win a title if Charlotte does not step up. Straight up. That's it's the most important thing for Milan. That confidence needs to be there. Um, I don't care how he gets his confidence back. He needs to be the guy. Um, so we'll keep on looking at a couple more questions. Um, I don't know if Santangelo is going to join back. Uh, do we really need a right winger, number 10 striker, et cetera? Or do we just need a medical staff? Uh, yes, we need all of those things and we need a working medical staff. 
Um, I think the training staff is really where it's at because at this point we're going away to Dubai and we're coming back with more injuries than when we went there. Um, that's a problem. So to me, that's, that's really worrisome. Um, we definitely need a right wing. Number 10 is to be determined. Raheem was good in the first half of the season. I don't think you can ask for too much more than what he gave you. Um, as far as the striker goes, they always needed a striker, and we've kind of touched on that already. Uh, okay, so the next question from Red and Black Grandson says, the future of Kalulu, or rather the future of center back and right back. This is because uh, Chow is coming, is claiming his place besides Tamori, and Kalulu is too good for the bench while our right backs are so poor. Does he switch the right back? I have always been um, a proponent of putting Kalulu at right back. I think he's definitely versatile enough. I think he's technically uh, a player that has that capability of stepping up and playing incredibly well um, in multiple positions. You saw him step up in the Champions League last year against uh, Porto at home. At left back, he played well. Center back, he has put in fantastic performances. He is one of the main reasons why they won the Scudetto because of his switch to center back. As far as right back goes, I think, and it looks like Santangelo has rejoined us. As far as right back goes for Pierre Kalulu, you're talking about Florenzi coming back, Calabria coming back, and Dest having a bigger role within the side. I do not think Pierre Kalulu will be seeing right back as much. I do think he is one of those guys that's going to be relied upon as a center back at this point. And, and okay, Santangelo is back just on audio. Anyways, Matt, I'm just talking about the Kalulu situation. For me, I think he stays at center back. I don't think he plays right back. Florenzi, Calabria, Dest all have that on lockdown at this point. I think he was seeing more right back because of the injuries. I don't see it changing. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, we move on from there. Is the squad able to mount a title run without Magnon? That's basically what we answered earlier. Um, All these comments have been addressed and the questions – so really, we're just sitting now um, as your final predictions heading into 2023 um, for the rest of the season. We sit quite a few points behind Napoli. We have to win our head-to-heads. We did pretty good against our head-to-heads against some of the top teams. We still need to face both of the Roma clubs, if I remember correctly. We drew against Atalanta. We beat Juve. We beat Inter. We lost to Napoli, unfortunately, even though we played great against them. I think Milan playing against Napoli was one of the best performances against Napoli this season. So there is some positives to take away from that. On top of missing the MVP in that match, that's... I know they lost Victor Oshman, but Victor is not the same level of importance to Napoli as Leao is to Milan. And if you want to argue with that, you have no idea what you're talking about and you don't even have any idea. Um, They've played without Victor for many of times and they've done well without him. I I would argue a guy like Lobotka or Anguisa is more important to Napoli than Victor Oshman is considering the depth at those positions. Um, Matt, my question to you is, can they, will they win the title? Um, I don't think they will. I think this is a second or third place team at this point. Um, And yeah, I I just, to me, the only way Milan win the title is if Napoli somewhat take a step back and if Charlie de Catellari plays up to the level that he is capable of playing and they're healthy. Because that's all, as far as everything that I've seen so far this season with Milan, if, if, if they are healthy, that 11, and then they have a working number 10. Like the, the the Charlotte that we saw against Bologna, right, at the start of the season when he's confident, where he's winning 50-50 balls, where he's winning ground duels, where he's progressive passer up the pitch. If that player is there and that player progresses, Milan can win the title. Do I think that happens? No. Um, I do I do think the Kitalare will will improve second half. I think – Time off will help him. I think he'll start. Or you could answer that question first, actually. So, do you think he's the most important player for the second half of the season? I said Aster Franks will be. So, I don't know what your answer to that is. I think it's uh, assuming the the players that are household names perform to the levels we 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 know they're capable of, and they can consistently play there. Yeah, that's that's one thing. I'm talking players that who is that next group of players? Yeah, yeah. The breakout player is what Ahmed right. was, was it's saying. It's the yeah. It is, because okay. Milan need another option in the attack, right? If yeah. it's not Leao, uh, taking guys on 1v1, uh, scoring goals, assists, yada, 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 
they really struggle to to really be consistently offensively potent, right? Like they struggle to kind of maintain that level. Um, if you can get another t- number ten in there who can combine with Leao, can help elevate maybe a guy like Salamakers or Macias, give Milan another option going forward that can create. Yep. We've seen in glimpses with Rahim not consistent enough in that liking. Then it will help out Giro. It will help out some of the <laughs> other guys. I think he is the most important player for Milan from the perspective that he needs to step up because they spent a lot of money on him and they were expecting him to be a key, like a key man. You don't spend 30 plus million on a player. I don't care how young he is if you don't think he can impact your team right now. So I think he has to be the he has to be the most important player. It's not that I do I think he will be. I yeah. think he can yeah. be. He has yeah. to be for Milan to reach the level that you just pointed out. Um, amongst injuries, right? Because we're seeing Krunic. Like, how are these guys getting injured when they're not playing international football? They're not playing in Dubai. What's going on? Like, are they surfing? Like, in fucking Maui? Like, what, what's going on here? Troy like, Groot says is... I have sauce on my hoodie, so that's why I'm looking weird. But continue. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, I think, yeah, he has to step up. Um, I think it, he definitely can. But, yeah, I think, you know, Francie's a good shout, but I don't know. I think it's just it has to be a perfect storm for Milan to repeat as champions. And I think if I'm being honest, it, I don't see it happening. Um, I just think there's too many injuries. There's players that are dropping off. Even like, you know, no, this is not me taking a slight at anybody, but some of the players that we had last year, right? Like Tomori wasn't, isn't as good this year as he was. No, step like back. Him, but some players have step stepped back. back a little bit and they haven't quite got there again yet. So We'll wait and see. I mean, stranger things have happened, right? Like, I think Milan were – they didn't. They weren't in first place at this time last year, right? But, but – oh, It's a different uh, animal. Like, you, you're asking Napoli to just blow it. And – That's really what it when is. When I see yeah. them play, they have a different gear to them. Like, they're not just doing this against Spezia, they Bologna. They're doing this in the Champions League, too. Yeah. That's, that's, that's te- that is very telling. So – I think this was the main question I had about Napoli, and I haven't been able to get an answer on it yet because it hasn't happened. But it's how does Napoli respond after a loss? They haven't. In in Serie, yeah. thirteen two and zero. This this Napoli, the way they're playing is is truly incredible. Will they get poached for their players? Probably a few of them. Um, but they're making the but, most out of this. But, stuff. but can I just ask you something? Can I say something to you? Sure. I don't know if – is this just a Milan problem here? Because I what find is? that Napoli, like, they don't – like, they don't really get poached like that. I don't know if it's the connection that a lot of these players have I with think... City. Six, seven – like, Napoli – Well, they do good jobs of players. these extensions. They're already ex- right. extending Kim and Jay. Right. And he just got that. But that's my point. Like, they – like, yeah. like even the players that were in the previous under Maurizio Sarri, right? Like, they sold Alan after he was there for four to five years. Like, they don't really – they're not the type of club that's going to make a move. He's going to play well. Like, they're not going to lose Kavadashvilia next summer because he has his breakout year. Like It's got to be – they, they'd only do it for 100. I think right, they'd ask for 100. What I'm saying is that they're yeah. able to keep players. Like, they have these little windows in their project where from a three- to four-year gap, they, they look at their midfield when they had those deep runs in for the title, right? They didn't win anything, but, like, they, they were – the consistent every year. Zilin, you know, mm-hmm. Alan, Hamshik. Like they always had. Like every year, you knew kind of what their eleven was. There was no. But like, they're so good. They're leave? so and good at selling that they balance their yeah. books. That it's good enough. Like Fabian Ruiz. Like nobody's talking about it. Goes to PSG. That was an important player for them. They they gain money that way. Yeah. They let Insigne Bavali, walk. They let. They were gonna suffer. They still, yeah, they still get a good price for a thirty-year-old center back, regardless of who he is. They save uh, wages on Mertens. They save wages on Insigne. They get rid of Andrea Patania. Yeah. They did have some bad years where where they were doing poorly, and it did hurt them under the Ancelotti era, the the Manola signings. Mm-hmm. They did a great job. This is what happens when your signings that are high upside hit the ground running. They have a good manager. They're filled at almost every position. I, I, I think it's just all kudos in the world to Spalletti. He, he had these guys ready immediately. Me too, though. Junta, of course, the scouting is great, but to have these guys prepped and ready to go and hit the ground running, like you see, 
it's not that there's anything wrong with the way Milan do things. I think Milan per- develop players better than most clubs do, but they have a different process, right? Because we see there's Charlie, and then the way Rafa was developed, and then there's Cavara. Cavara has had a better season than any player in Serie A right now. Yeah. And top, bro. If it's not for the He's top having three, his season in year one, not year three for Leao. I listen. Kavara is going to be a better player at this rate. That's just what it is. If he um, scores, that's what I mean. How is it? How is he not? He's a he's a better finisher already. He's on par with dribbling. Um, I think I think he has a way better work rate. And it's not to say Rafa's not great. And we still we still boss them. So like even if Napoli fans want to come in and bitch about it, we went into your house, won the title, and took a dookie on your face. So I don't want to hear about any of that stuff, all right? So I'll just get that out of the way before we hear any idiot Napoli fans barking up. Because this isn't over yet. There's 25 matches left. I think there's been a lot of arrogance from that fan base. I'll just say that. Um, especially for a side that hasn't won in over 30 years and perennially chokes. Okay, they're notorious for it. I think them puffing out their chest is bullshit. So I just I, that's been bothering me. Um, although I give them their credit, and I give plenty of teams and all these other clubs their credit. Juve, I find interesting as I want to wrap up. I think I, I I want your answer to who you find as to be the biggest threats. Um, three points up on Inter, three points up on Lazio, thirty uh, two points up on Juve. We have the tiebreaker on multiple uh, sides. Six points up on Roma, six points up on Atalanta. I think it's really just between the seven big clubs right there. You know, you swap out Atalanta with Fiorentina, right? This Juve situation with Vlahovic is is interesting. I don't I don't know how Juve survived this sort of crisis that they're in. Their defense has been fantastic. Getting Chiesa back is vital. They're still not better than Milan. Um, we'll see. Lazio, good Serie A side. Do they step up against the top sides? We'll see. We'll see how they handle Leo because Leo used to destroy them. I really think that it's going to have to take Napoli to fall back a little bit, and Milan's got to get hot again. Um, I mean, we could look at Milan's schedule to start the new year and what they got going on Milan is really learning Tana. They, Milan really haven't hit that, 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 that gear yet, though. January is not easy, my friend. January is not easy. Have you seen – I'll read off the schedule real yeah. quick. Salernitana, Wednesday, January 4th. Mimo Ochoa, game of his life, guaranteed. Roma. Away? Where are we? At home against Roma. Big one, tough one. We'll see. Yeah. Torino, um, Coppa Italia. Uh, we'll see. I, I don't put too much stock in that, but that'll be an annoying one. Uh, Lecce, Milan. That should be a win. Milan enter for the Supercoppa. Go all in for a trophy, my friends. Um, Lazio, Milan. We're we're away to Lazio. Um, and then Sassuolo, Milan. These, this this is all in January. This is, is nice to get easy, a couple though? of these. Is any game No, it's not easy. easy. Like, like that's, that's kind of been the theme for... And then you go to and then you go to February where we have the Derby. Then we play Torino again within the league, no game, and we play like, Spurs. No game you can sleep on. No opponent you can sleep on. And that sounds like this a, is not a cliche thing. But like if you're if you're Napoli, then you if you're not a fan, you feel that confidence based on the way you've played it so far that Salernitana is a light opponent will handle them. But Milan has always seemed to barely skate on by some of these teams, and they've gotten results. But eventually, again, like. They've had moments where they lose or they draw, and you ultimately, if you do, if you do that enough throughout a season, you find yourself on the outside looking in. I will say this though: Milan hasn't hit for all the 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 results that the points they left on the field in the first bunch of games we've seen. They haven't have they haven't come close to the level that they were at their peak last year. Where, in my opinion, you can make a case that Napoli, like. How much like Napoli oh, no, been playing reason. great? How mm-hmm. much greater can Napoli truly play because they're at such a high level now? That's my argument. Like eventually, there's gonna have to be like a, hey, Kavadashkili is not scoring a goal or assist a game. Like, hey, Osimhen's not scoring a game. Like eventually, they got to have an injury. I don't wish injury on anybody, but Milan mm. have through all this, 
with a backup goalkeeper who's 35 years old, injuries, players in the defense not playing to the same level, not having really much production at right wing, your big summer signing not doing much of anything, just being Leao and Giroud heroics, they're a handful of points out of first place still with 25 games left. So if you look at half glass, uh, full- mm-hmm. you're lagging, lagging a bunch. Poor yeah, Saints, then that's a whole other conversation. You know what I'm saying? So I will say this though, getting back to that main question, because I know that's what you kind of pose, like who is their main threat? Um, you may have come on strong, and I know they're outside of the situation yeah. now. Um, Allegri has always seemed to, um, I mean, again, shit house three points, shit house three points, but also like the second half of seasons, he's always emphasized that it's like a different animal, and they always seem to hit like a little bit of a second wind in the second half of season. That was with the leadership and past teams that he had. And my question is like, what has he got yes, now, but- and are they capable of doing so? I don't think I don't think they're gonna I don't think you're gonna see a max exit as of players in January. I don't see like a Vlahovic everyone leaving. Um, I, I think I think it's just it's just a very interesting situation. I'm not thinking, I don't think they're gonna spend a lot, but I think no, they can't. They can't stay. spend. They can't no, spend. That, but I'm saying to you, yeah. I think they're gonna. I don't think you're gonna see. Well, they have so much uncertainty. Out goes Vlahovic. Out goes this player. Out goes that player. I don't see that. There might be no, it's got to be a godfather offer for Vlavic. They're not going to. But know. I think that the, the way that the, the theme of this is that the, the, the landscape of Serie A is so competitive that, you know, like you have a lot of teams crowded at the top. And even if, how slow they started, they've kind of recovered quite well. And mm-hmm. they're still in a good spot. I know Lukaku, yeah. we're going to make the jokes. I get it. Everyone loves Lautaro Martinez. He didn't do it at the World Cup, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Talking about the World Cup now. That's over. That's done and dusted. We're talking about Serie A, and Serie a. he's a player that does really well in Serie A. So well, they pay, they face off immediately. By the way, Napoli and Inter. Yeah. Uh, on more than yeah, yeah Napoli Inter is <laughs> the main one. Ah, uh, six thirty eight. End game for fucking Milan. It's the landing pound. Listen. Um, it was great to catch up. I wanted to do 30 minutes. I gave you an hour, so don't ever say I didn't do anything for you, you rat. Um, appreciate I everyone that came in. A- <laughs> yeah, well, you haven't been on in half an hour face-wise. Um, appreciate everybody coming through. Muja, Torgru, trolling me on the text. John, Jason, Sensei Coco. Um, if you guys haven't followed me already on Twitch, feel free to do so. Um, this will be fully uploaded to YouTube, so if you missed the episode... You can go and just watch it. I don't even know. It's an episode. It's just really a stream. It's not a part of an official show. Don't really have any production like we did with Milan Reports. But it's just good to talk Milan every now and then. I, I get DMs about it. I get replies about it. They want the both of us to you know kind of talk. Um, there's obviously always great places to go and get your content. But there's more video stuff coming soon with State of Play Pod. We're going to be recording next week. Uh, just discussing uh the tournament and all that stuff um uh of obviously the world cup and Messi finally winning it so everybody can just shut up for the rest of his life great sight to see um oh yeah and i guess so final predictions we'll end it right here uh milan for supercopa coppa italia serie a and what they do in the champions league give me your results and predictions for every single one of those I can go first if you need me to. Uh, if not, you can go. Yeah, you could go first. I was going to say treble, okay. but that would be... <laughs> okay, domestic treble ain't impossible. Um, I will say Supercopa, round of 16 exit in Champions League. I think we lose to Spurs, unfortunately. Um, I do think we uh, lose in the semifinals of Coppa Italia. Um and I think we finished second in Serie A. I think it's just a one trophy year, uh, unfortunately. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, I actually think we're going to – Supercopa, we'll take the Supercopa to bring mm-hmm. that back to mm-hmm. Um We do get by Spurs. I think we get in time. Conte, Conte. If if it wasn't Conte, Conte yeah, but Conte, Conte European tax. 
Champions League he hasn't made deep runs ever. I know, but it's one of those something's got to give. Conte against Milan and 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 you know, like there's so many. I don't like, know. Right? Yeah. I mean, I okay. It's possible. <clears throat> no, yeah, game, I got the you. First game being mm-hmm. at Milan is kind of annoying, right? I guess the first game is of that of that tie is home, right? Against Spurs. Uh, yeah, but again, um, don't forget. Away doesn't matter anymore because there's no away goals. No, I know, but psychologically, yeah, yeah, yeah. like no, I meant I meant for like everybody. I meant for like yeah, everybody, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Um, we get by Spurs though. Okay. And we we don't we don't win the title. I think that's a that's a marathon. I don't think we have unless yeah. something changes in January where we have a winger and someone else. I'm only in. all it's Napoli's got to fall back. Napoli's got to fall back. It's yeah. it starts it starts with this new game. Uh, sorry, this new this new start. Beat Salernitana and gain three points on Napoli if they lose to Inter, then you're starting with something. But yeah. continue. Yeah. So I know that was it. Super Copa we take. We advance past Spurs, but we finish. Coppa Italia. Top three in Italy. Uh, Coppa Italia. We we don't win Coppa Italia. I think it's just it's tough for me I to could... say. It's like I can't say like yeah we're gonna take home everything. <laughs> oh, I do actually think now that I remember. That we do have a favorable path mm. to um, the the champions. So okay, so we face the winner of Fiorentina Sampdoria. Then we were to face the winner of either Napoli, Cremonese, uh, Roma, or Genoa to get to the semifinals. So potential, if you look down, it's Roma or Napoli, most likely. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the far side of the bracket, it's really just, I mean, it's a lot of, it's Juve, Lazio, Atalanta, Inter. I think, I think it's been split up well. This could be a very good Coppa Italia. I am, a, I am a proponent of pushing Coppa Italia to the forefront of interesting competitions. You can only make a competition so interesting by the amount of hype that you give it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. In that sense? If you start shit talking and, and and boasting about Coppa Italia and making it a bigger deal, then it becomes more important. For me, you can, yeah, Maybe yeah, I don't know. Is that, is that, what's it called? Trofeo Berlusconi. <laughs> yeah. So, in your opinion, if it's just a super if if it's just a super Copa for Milan this year, uh, trophy wise, is okay. So, so what is it is successful? And for Milan, is it top four Super Copa, Coppa I mean, Italia semi final, and then a quarter final be, in the Champions League? I mean, like the way I laid it out, I would I would be content with that. Um, I mean, I think if we're talking just strictly on Champions League because that's such a main major objective, like me made progress there, right? Mm-hmm. Stage exit last year, kind of sixteen this year, so you can consider that a, a success in that stance. Although, again, the opponent that we have is an opponent that I think we can get by. But if yeah. you told me, hey, Matt, Milan aren't going to repeat. They're going to make top four again. Yeah. They're going to advance to the round of 16 quarterfinals in the Champions League. And they're going to take home a trophy domestic cup. Like a domestic trophy. Yeah. I'd be like, I'll sign up for that. I'll sign up for that. Because the Champions League is a, is a very good it's a, That's a huge focus, right? That's 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 money. Like. I'm talking strictly on things that can impact our financial situation, and that can give us more impact on the market. So those yeah. that I laid it out, I'd be I'd be content with that. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, and by the way, I just like to address one thing on a video I did yesterday because <laughs> there's so many fucking idiots on on TikTok. Uh, just not to insult anybody, but when I said the Malin Dora isn't completely wrapped up for Messi, I meant that. But it also doesn't mean that I don't think Messi is going to win it. I don't understand how this happens. <laughs> and I know you watched the video. I don't know how people come away with it saying, oh, you don't think Messi's going to win. It's like, why do I even bother? <laughs> um, follow Santangelo on social media platforms at Matt underscore Santangelo. Stay the play pod, uh, which him and I both do. Um, if we ever get together on Milan stuff, we weasel our way into putting it in the state of play pod whenever we can, but we also discuss it. We also discuss it on here. I'm going to be doing a lot more pre-match stuff. If I can get Matt on for that, if he's not at the gym or golfing with his 30 billion golf clubs, um, Mm. he should be in here or even post-match stuff spaces is back after Elon stopped being a little baby. 
Um, but yeah, usually trying to go live for this, this sort of stuff, uh, boosting up the YouTube channel, Instagram. Um, do you have an Instagram you want people to follow or no, is it I, just stay to play? Yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, my Instagram's private. So unless I know you, <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> and then you could follow me just everywhere. Martino Puccio, um, uh, growing, uh, got over a thousand followers on Instagram now. Uh, we are so close to 10 K followers on Twitter. We are close to a thousand followers on uh a thousand subs on youtube and almost three thousand on uh tiktok so a bunch yeah, of milestones it, man. about to hit yeah so i'm behind, like, behind, dude i've been seeing the numbers man you're putting the work and like the number the, the numbers are there man like, there's a lot of people stupid. that are really gravitating towards that so i mean it's been crazy that's awesome thank you well i mean listen and uh, there'll be a lot more for state of play once we get those clips and ready to go and normal once scheduling a, there's just been so many young setup, that's not archaic yeah there's it's just it's just difficult for everybody right now um but yeah go and check out all that stuff if you haven't already it's greatly appreciated with all of the support um also uh, follow on twitch if you have not already if you have a twitch prime sub that you don't really use or give to anybody more than welcome if you want to send it on over don't feel pressure to do that um but i do have emotes i have an emote of my dog by the way i don't know if you've if you guys have seen yeah. but I have my friend Sean. Show, listen, man. All I do is show up, and then you do all that the, the the technical stuff. I just show up. I'm just a voice, man. Bro, you disconnect. Yeah, Santan. Well, actually, if you wanna if you wanna send in over some funds for Santangelo to eventually get a, a laptop that has been released this past decade, I, listen, that would I can be afford great. it. It's just I'm, I'm I, cheap in certain aspects. <laughs> Bro, it's not it's not cheap. It's an investment for your work that'll help you progress. Like, look at me. I it's helped me. You have a bigger following. I don't know why we're debating this live still. But anyways, um, everybody, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Merry Christmas if you celebrate. Happy New Year as well. Happy Hanukkah. Um, and Happy Hanukkah. Yeah, I believe Hanukkah is still going on. Um, and uh, and whatever other holidays are around this time of the year if you celebrate it. Um, but other than that. See you later.